Okay, kids, Lou Hamilton here from Audible Elegance in Cincinnati, Ohio. We are located on Montgomery Road, a couple doors north of the Montgomery Inn, across the street from Montgomery Cyclery. We do work on Facebook, Instagram, and X. I also write a monthly blog. And tonight, I'm back at my Lynn turntable from hell um, because every time I touch this thing, I just find more and more and more. Now, we have sold the turntable to a very lovely customer and he was kind enough to let me use his table now um, as we continue to resolve issues and problems. And tonight, it's not about Lynn. It's about the purchase of any turntable where the arm can be purchased separately. And what we're talking about is that each tone arm has what's known as an overhang distance. And it relates to how the cartridge is to track across the album. Pardon me for a moment, I'll give you an example. So as you've seen earlier, we used this before, this is an alignment protractor provided for Lynn turntables, at least when we were a dealer. They have a different version right now, a little better, I suppose. Now, you have a couple things going on. You have an exact set down point, and that's what this Denison sound tractor allows us to do. You also have the two point system, which is a different way of looking at the arc itself that the stylus should be tracking so there's no distortion on the inner or outer grooves. And here you have this setup so that it's specifically for um, the overhang of 229 millimeters. Uh, different arm lengths have different overhang gauges. So um, this customer took our advice, went out and bought a new cartridge for it. It's a, it's a, a very nice one, Signet, which is a, kind of an AT design. Um, give him a very lively sound. I really like the cartridge. And when we went to set this up, and we went to find the point, what we discovered is the cartridge was off by almost a half inch, um, which meant on the inner grooves, it would sound like ass. So I didn't do the original work on this table and um, the grace uses a large nut underneath to lock it into place so the hope and the prayer was that we could actually move the tone arm and in fact rather than having a proper size hole drilled for the tone arm the hole has to be larger than the actual um, shaft of the tone arm uh, the pillar so to speak and so what we were able to do was to move it about. But anyone who has seen a prior video, notice that we had a lifter on it. So it would lift up the tone arm at the end of play. Um, Signet made these, Audio-Technica sold them. They're kind of an interesting device. I've owned them in the past. They're a little fussy sometimes, but they can work very nicely. But you can see we had to move the arm so forward to get it into proper position and side to side that that original lift or the tone arm had to be removed. It was worthless. It was in the way. Now, when you're buying a used turntable um, with an aftermarket tone arm put on it, um, you have no idea whether its original assembly followed the proper geometry. It's a crapshoot. And, um, you know, the two-point system makes it really complicated to know exactly what's going on and, and how it's, it's wrong. That's the reason that, you know, for 38 years, I've had this um, Denison with me. Now, if you're starting out fresh, Denison made another product, and, and I sold mine years ago because I got tired of mounting all sorts of weird tone arms on all sorts of weird turntables. Um, and it was called... Um, the pivot tram. And the beauty of the pivot tram is that you could set the overhang distance of, of the arm. You know, the manufacturer provides that to you. You would set the pivot tram on the spindle, and then you would know by a pointer exactly where the center 
of the tone arm needed to be drilled in. You would drill in a pilot hole and then you would use your hole saw to complete the work. Um, they're very rare and very hard to find, but I just don't get into mounting odd arms on odd turntables anymore. It's a lot of work and most people don't appreciate the effort um, because the engineering is very critical. So in this case, we really had to move the arm around quite a bit. And um, on some arms, uh, it could be so much that um, the reason they put the arm in the wrong position is so that it could close the dust cover. It has nothing to do with performance. Uh, in this case, we're lucky enough the turntable dust cover closes just fine. So I refer to this as the table from hell, but um, this clearly is not anything that has to do with Lynn. This has to do with the fact that the original engineering was FUBAR from the beginning. And this can happen with any turntable out there. Um, and it's just that I'm very familiar with the lens and can pick up something pretty quickly. It's like, this doesn't look right. And uh, lo and behold, it wasn't. Some of the things you'll see on some of the modern tone arms, um, at this time, Grace did not have it. They'll actually have a little tiny cup in the top of the housing, which marks the center point of both the horizontal and vertical bearings. It's really nice to have, rather than having this point wander all over the top of the tone arm because there's no place to lock it in. Fortunately, on the Grace, there is a slotted screw, which allows us to have it somewhat fairly stable as we said about our work. So, <clears throat> you know, they may have a, a glorious turntable and they might have a glorious arm, but if the work wasn't done right, you're gonna wind up with distortion on the inner or outer grooves and you're not gonna enjoy it. So um, I think some of these uh, devices are made in plastic. I, I always prefer the aluminum one from Denison. But, you know, if you're real serious about it, you wanna make sure that the position of the tone arm is exactly where it needs to be. So I just wanted to bring that up because I continue to have fun with this turntable. And oh, by the way, I made a crack about it the other week because between the time um, that I did my original testing uh, and the mounting of the cartridge, guess what? The original Grace tone arm lead I lost a channel. I tested it out and toned it out, but with as hard crimped as it was underneath, it's no surprise that it eventually failed. So uh, he's got a new one on order and we'll take care of him. But uh, as I said, this table has been a lot of fun and uh, he's a great customer. And I really appreciate the opportunity to to use this table to, to make this discussion tonight. So there we are. Have a good evening.